What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangeli here with Valley Flying to do part two of our review of the blog post. Now, for those who didn't see the first part, we're going to have a link somewhere and in the description below to Valley's video. So we're going to have a good time. But before we do that, Valley, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Is this the first time I've been on your channel? Yes. We need to mark this day down. Uh, it is a day. We'll mark it by the blog post. February 13th. I just figured out what day it was. Uh, <laughs> so we have not, for those who don't know, we have not watched this, uh, read through all of it. We read through part of it on Valley's channel. And we're going to read through the rest of it here. Just do a live reaction of what's going on. The overall, take, overall takeaway of this was positive so far. So let's make sure it keeps staying that way. Anything you want to say before we go, Valley? Um, I read through the topics. There's a few things that I don't know if are addressed that uh, I'm wondering if they're going to address. So let, let's keep going. No, let's see. So what we did on your channel was orange gear access, training modules, character availability, and the Doom Raid rewards. For us, we're going to start talking right here at Quitting Penalty in RTA. Alright. Also... Is it more about RTA or just a Quitting Penalty? Ah, uh, who knows? <laughs> Take what we can get, right? <laughs> Also, in version 5.1, we made a change to allow the AI to continue a match if opponent quits. This was in response to players quitting out before a match was completed, causing frustration in the opponent's experience. Well, I'm going to interrupt you real quick right there, me reading the story. Uh, probably wouldn't have been frustrated and quit if... Uh you know, the game mode allowed you to play the way you wanted to. Anyway, uh, we tried to further discourage quitting by making it so that players who don't quit don't get progress toward objectives. We've since heard your feedback that these are very valid reasons to quit a match and that this felt too punishing. We plan to address this issue in an upcoming update that will allow players to quit to keep their progress from the match. The AI will still continue to play for them after they leave so their opponent can finish the match. That's good. That's good. That's good. I don't know if it's the overarching changes that I want to see in RTA, but maybe we're going to have to see the blog post in three weeks to see what's coming up with RTA because it looks like the season started. Whatever we have right now in RTA is what we got this season for season three. Yeah. Right. Right. They're, they're just taking this, but I, I want to, I would like to see more addressed about RTA. This one is weird to me because like, doesn't like, why would you punish a player for quitting if the opponent still gets to battle the AI. Like, the reason quitting is toxic is because you're taking away uh, the person who wants to play's ability to finish what they're doing. If you fix that problem, then it doesn't matter if someone quits or not, because they're still going to go into a fight against you, just AI'd you. So there's no downside to it. There's no need to punish someone for quitting when you solve the biggest problem from quitting. And I'm pretty sure they said they, they were going to do that in the first place. So I don't quite understand why they're doing this. Maybe I'm missing it, but... I, I, I think that when it first came out in that season one, people were quitting like, Oh, these quitters are horrible. They're ruining this. And I think it was an overreaction at that point. Now that now that it's seen and uh, it's implemented, like, all right, we don't have to punish the quitters because... Oh. Take over. I, I, that's what I'm thinking in my head because I know the initial reaction... In, in that first week of season one was all oh, these quitters are horrible they're ruining this experience and i think that they they came up with a solution very early on and that's that's what and now it's back in december what would happen here yeah like they might maybe they reacted to a problem that was and not the problem that is now and that makes sense because the biggest reason people were quitting is because they'd go in with a 200k power team and fight a 600 power black order and be like, well, I don't want to do this, so I'm quitting. And then people are like, well, I'm not getting my research. You know, like, yeah, like. The quitting was the symptom. It wasn't the yeah, symptom. yeah, the yeah. So, like, the matchmaking is better, but still not good. So there should be less quitting. And now, uh, the only reason I would ever quit in an RTA fight uh, is if I'm, like, someone is specifically targeting, like, my weak, not weak garbage, but weaker characters that I'm clearly using for an event. Like, hey, I have to use... You quit right now in Season 3. You're going to have to wait till that player finishes their match, however long it takes before you can do another one. Uh, this, this fixes it here yet. <laughs> yeah, so instead of quitting, we just, what, AF... Like, like what? That, how does that fix the problem? Now I just AFK? 
Like, put the phone down, go get a sandwich. Like, it, it doesn't help anybody. That's what season three is in RGA, so. It doesn't fix toxicity, just moves it. Like, Patrick, why don't we take it and move it over there? Can, can it, they, can, is it hard to do hot food this? For them? Probably. Well, just look at the, look at the third header. Thor's hammer throw crap. We're getting a note on this six months after it started. All right. So let's move to the next point. Raid milestones. Raid season milestones have been untouched. This wasn't even a huge, this was one of, even one of the main bullet points. I'm glad they're addressing this. <laughs> right, good. This needs to be addressed for a while. I, did, I forgot about how terrible they were. <laughs> like... It was just like, like what we finished raid season miles. I'm not even gonna read this. Like we all know it sucks. We finished raid season milestones the first. Yeah, they were, they were so bad that we forgot how bad they were. And we weren't even talking about it anymore. They could have got away with this one scot free. They, they could have just been like, whatever, dude. Like, we do we finish it in like two days now. Like, oh great, thanks for the seventeen thousand credits. Wait, wait. <laughs> all right fine raid season milestones have been untouched since their initial implementation in 2018 we agree that this is an area that we've ignored for far too long and needs to be updated okay one of the ways we plan to do so is by rewarding additional gear to help players progress at all levels that's the purple year we talked that's the purple year you talked about <laughs> so, yes thank you i'm so happy <laughs> I'm so happy I'm crying. <laughs> Just, how bad? It's so funny because there are things that suck that we forgot about because newer, suckier things happen. <laughs> uh, I I, I want to scroll down and see in response to the orb gate milestone. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thor's hammer throw crash. Another topic that's causing our community concern is that of long-standing bugs and arguably... Many bugs, okay. <laughs> uh, they should name it, a, they should name the next patch this. It's perfect. And arguably none is more frustrating than the crash soft lock that sometimes plagues Thor's hammer throw. Sometimes? This bug has been a significant source of frustration for us as well. The soft lock issue with Thor's hammer throw is something we've actively been investigating for several months. We know this is happening, we've seen it happen to us, but has proven difficult problem to diagnose. Rest assured that we're continuing our investigation and won't give up until it's resolved. All right, guys, Scopely's on the case. <laughs> Let me be clear. I actually know why this is happening because it never happened. And then Striker ISO 8 was placed on Thor and then it happens all the time. The issue is Striker ISO 8 not knowing how to interact when his hammer hits something that isn't the first target with the ISO on it because of how it's coded. I know this is how it's worked. You're welcome, guys. I'm fixing it for you. Now let's go back and figure out why characters that don't have a buff still have the buff symbol over their head. I'm just, I'm just happy they have a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek approach to it. Like it is a big problem, uh, but I am happy they're able to keep their their sense of humor on it too. Uh, it just makes them feel less like a corporate monster trying to steal our money. And more like a friend trying to steal our money. And finally, what I've been waiting for, forever, saved squad slots. With more characters comes a need for more saved squad slots. Can we just stop right here and, and give the world's biggest duh ever to that? Like, like they're saying it as if there's someone who's playing like, holy shit. I didn't even think of that. You're right. We should have more save. Like, this is not news. 
and we plan to add more save squads in the next game version there will also be additional information regarding further save squads enhancements in the 2021 preview um that's tabs they're looking to do either a band-aid or the fix so maybe we're getting a band-aid now and then the fix is going to be mentioned in this 20 or not now but in the next update and then the big real fix is the 2021 preview that at least that's what i'm hoping i'm, I'm optimistically hoping that to segue for a second no no you're right to segue for a second one of the biggest problems in world of warcraft for its whatever 20 years of play was the it's called the keychain or um uh the amount of item slots your character could have in a bag so for the first couple of expansions you know you had bags that had eight to ten slots and the next bags came out and they were 12 slots and the next bag came out and it was 14 slots and you're like why are we only getting two slots per bag and it was because the game was coded in such a way that it didn't know how to handle certain amounts of of uh of these things it wasn't until i think it was whatever maybe three or four five years ago or three expansions ago rather that they reworked the game uh, almost from a ground level to fix that problem so to me what's up i'm wondering if that's what they need to do here that's yeah so long and we're getting these little five increments and not i think that they put save squads in as a hey look you can save your teams now like we'll put it on top of the architecture we've built and i think what they're trying to do is move it to be more fluid and if you played through the game you'll notice there's one area that's very indicative of uh of those of that issue or that change if you go into your roster screen and you click there's a button called manage manage allows you to look at all of your save squad teams uh in the roster screen itself and edit them live as opposed to what happens in the blitz campaign where you can't touch or edit them you can also click independent characters and it will take you to that character screen but it's a little buggy i suspect that there that was their test to fix the future of save squads and it it's still a little buggy but it'll get there and then that's what they're going to do they're going to replace what we have in save squads with this actually encompassing version where you can not only edit the the save squads on the you know on the fly and so instead of having to you know recreate the team and then move them up and down uh as well as be able to click on the characters themselves and view them that's something that this game has been dramatically missing for a very long time the ability to click a character and look at them uh without having to go out of wherever screen you're on i think that's part of the entire architecture they're looking to rebuild that's just my guess hopefully they rebuild it <laughs> In the meantime, give us five more save squad slots. I also like to comment that they, uh, they're they doing a 2021 preview video. We are very close to the month of March. Any any later, it's no longer a 2021 preview. It's a quarter one review. Like, <laughs> just saying. Where's the red star? They, they, they didn't mention red stars. What, what is this? So that's probably what we should do. Let's let's talk about the stuff that they didn't mention. Like off the top of your head, what can you think that like maybe they should address? Was not mentioned was Red Stars. I, I think that system was broken on day one. They made two changes to it; it's still broken. And uh, there was a bandaid that was put on it in uh, version 2.0 of the update. We got a bunch of silver and gold promotion credits at the time, and I don't think a lot of players noticed how bad it was until a few months later. So now it's now it's many months later and it's not good and this is the rework 2.0 was, was not what we needed to fix that system i agree i think that uh the red stars i i liked i it was always a broken system but it was a forgivably broken system because they were making a ton of money on it so the fact that it was making them money made them not want to change it and i understand it. i don't like it but i understand it at this point in the game i think we can all agree that uh especially in end game or late game players four red stars is not what it used to be 
uh, based on how they're scaling the content and they're starting to mention higher red stars for for characters they need to loosen the the stranglehold they have not just on red star orbs but on promotion credits uh it, it's time they still value promotion credits both silver and gold promotion credits way higher considering how long it takes to obtain them if the game was built and meta's changed so often it's ridiculous the whole system is ridiculous if the game was built that you only had to work on five to ten characters at a time or have five to ten characters at a time like some of the other games like star wars galaxy of heroes yeah like that makes sense this game punishes you for not having a wide roster it punishes you very hard in a lot of raids and a lot of wars even in blitz so for that purpose you know, I'm not saying that every single player should have 500k teams right now. There's a lot of things that go into it. There's stars, red stars, yada, 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 yada. Um, I think that red stars need to get a little bit looser now because they're no longer the new shiny thing. They are now the burden upon which a player's progress is directly uh, held. So, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, for me, something I've been wanting to see, uh, and this is this is going to sound weird because you and I have both been playing the game for three years or so. <laughs> I'm I want to see a change in the early stages of the game. I feel like I can't, in good conscience, tell friends of mine to play this game with any plan other than this is how quickly you can get Ultron, and then they're like, oh, well, what do we do after that? It's like, oh. Ah! Uh -huh. lose be miserable for six months and that's a lot of the bottlenecks and that's fine but i feel like the the beginning of the game uh people are getting burned out from just starting to play it's too far away you can't have your friends come in something has to be done to the new player experience that's more than just offering packages that are good because good packages are good packages and people are willing to spend money but it still is a game and the game has to be fun there has to be something. My idea, something that increases the shards. Like for me, in my mind, I'm starting to see a point where there's very little reason for characters that have been in the game for two or three years that are on like node farms or even for some argument, some of the raid store or store purchases, those character shards can be increased now. Some of those characters, those early character nodes like Yandu and, and uh, you know, Electra. I might be two years or older uh and now would be like release characters all release characters double drop on all their store nodes and other campaign nodes i'd say if the content was available when the game came out like it's very simple if the content was available when the day the game came out you can either double the amount of the things that you get so uh, instead of only dropping two character shards, it would potentially drop four, you know, four would be the minimum for for characters that are a little bit lower on the pool. Um, I would argue that the level, the, the time to go from zero to 60, uh, I would even argue a little bit more than 60, maybe 65 should actually be shrunk a little bit. Uh, just a bit more experience than now. Yeah, well, except you can't really give more experience, but you can remove the amount of experience it takes to get from A to B while still keeping the last 10 or 15 levels competitive, so to speak. Yeah, like some some new player experience. And they've mentioned in this blog plenty of things about new players. They'll say like uh, when in, our, in the video we did on your channel, it says, especially newer players about training modules. There's a lot of things newer players are having a hard time experiencing that they might not even know yet because they haven't seen it because they're still in the honeymoon phase of the game, that there are things that have to be addressed. At least that's my, the new player experience has to be addressed, that kind of thing. Anything else you think that they should have mentioned? Um, I think um, a lot of these things are incomplete and I think they are pushing a lot of stuff off till that, uh early 2021 blog post which they mentioned in three weeks which i hope is earlier last year <laughs> last year when we had a similar situation going on with community it, it came earlier so oh me too we'll see what we'll, we'll see what happens with it, it it's uh, incomplete as of now a lot of i'm gonna make a prediction because there there's an issue and we're gonna you know what is this february 13th so see you next year on this one uh last year around this time we were at the burgeoning days of 
both COVID and Fix MSF, the 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 boycott or whatever you want to call it, because of issues that started in November of 2019 and persisted uh, well into the early of 2020. So that happened. That was a thing that happened. This year, there were issues that started around November of 2020, and we are now in February of 2021, and they are making a very similar post because the community is upset. I they went on vacation. Is it the vacation that they went on and, and doing all this stuff early and pushing like content in that time frame and not making it fun? I'm making a ch open challenge to them right now. Could you please, pretty please, with sugar on top, don't make it three years running. Like three strikes and you're out. You know, if this the it's new people mad now. Like like the the there are people who were playing the game during Fix MSF that are now like this is garbage. So like like you like please you've like fool me once shame on you. Fool me twice shame on me. Don't fall in the same hole again, guys. This is you know what the pro you know where this is coming from. You know what these problems are. At this point, if the if come November, the game is in the same state it was last November and the November before it, at this point it's a tradition of failure. You know, like you're not making mistakes, you're being intentionally bad. Like please, just this is easy stuff. The all of these posts that we talked about could have been addressed before and it, so just let's not make it three for three. That's all I ask from you, Scopely. That's it. I think we're, uh, I think we got some good stuff here. I think the posts are useful information. I don't forgive them for making these mistakes in the first place, but I appreciate their openness and willingness to communicate what they plan on doing. We have to wait and see if what they plan on doing sucks or not. That's on you. Where do you stand on it? We'll go, we're gonna see. Uh, I like I like that the stuff was mentioned. I like that uh, it was acknowledged. Uh, I do wish that red stars and some ketchup mechanics and some other things that I probably uh, can't think of off the top of my head should have been addressed. But um, I, I think it's a good start, and we'll have to see. Maybe we'll we'll see in this blog post, and we'll see in, in their action subsequent to this. All right. So it looks like generally positivity. We're ho crossing our fingers and our toes and our tails if we have them. Cautious optimism. Cautious optimism. All right. So that's it. That is the first ever Valley Flying on Tony Scongeli video. We talked about the blog post. Uh, anything you want to plug, anything you want to talk about, your videos are going to be linked everywhere on my channel for the next day. <laughs> Guy more popular than me. I'm sure I can help. <laughs> this channel you've been online so many times and it's, it's nice to finally meet your audience Hi, my name is Ali. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for joining uh as is tradition i will say my goodbyes maybe next time i'll let you have them but uh have a good night everybody have a great day i've been tony scongeli and we will catch you later <laughs>